low and high self-esteem. I guess that's something that we all have been struggling with in some form or another. And I think we would all agree that it's nicer to have high self-esteem rather than low self-esteem. But even high self-esteem is a double-edged sword. And you can clearly see this when you really look at the word self-esteem, which shows the almost schizophrenic nature of the human psyche. Because there's two elements to it. There's the self, an image we have, and there's something that regards it highly or lowly. So when you have, for instance, high self-esteem in a certain topic, maybe you're really good at playing the piano, then you live with this image, this story of I am a good pianist. Now, maybe you have one day that your piano skills aren't as good as they used to be. And because you live with this story, there is this longing to be congruent with it. And you're fighting the fact that today you're having an off day and you will come up with all sorts of excuses. Yeah, the piano is off tune or uh, I really slept uh, badly or whatever comes up. And it's quite tiring to always be fighting whatever arises. Why can't you simply be okay with the fact that today you're not playing as good as you'd like to. Similarly, if you have low self-esteem, even if someone would give you a compliment and be really praiseworthy of what you're doing, you would negate it. You say, oh no, it's, you don't really understand, I'm, I'm not that good or whatever. So you're trying to hold on to the story of having low self-esteem. In both cases, it is this story that adds a very heavy layer on top of every moment. So there's something that is beyond self-esteem. It is no self. It is when you let go of this story and you no longer live with a split in your psyche where you always have to uphold this concept you have of yourself. Because why can't you simply find yourself the way you find yourself? And this doesn't mean that if you're really good at playing the piano normally and today you're having an off day, that you won't strive to become better and have less days where you're not playing as good as you'd like to. But you're not fighting the fact that in this moment you're not playing the way you'd like to. So when you're able to let go of this story, and this can simply be done by observing whenever the mind, the psyche starts playing these stories like, I am like this and I should be behaving like this and why am I not doing this? Oh, I have to find excuses why this is the case. This is something that goes on and on and on and it's very tiring when you're able to let go of it and see it for what it is, just an automatic pattern that tries to survive, your life becomes much, much lighter. And it is actually interesting to see that apart from the story that slowly dies, the story of me, a relationship dies also, the relationship you have with yourself. It is quite a heavy relationship to live with and once this relationship dies, which sounds actually maybe not so nice, but when you're able to live just the way you find yourself, then you're actually able to live the way you truly are. People often say, just be yourself. Well, that is what is truly meant when you say, live your true life, be yourself. You let, let go of this story, of this concept that you have to mirror yourself to and you try to uphold. And when you're able to do that, your life simply becomes much lighter and much more enjoyable. Have a great day.